Hey there, once again, YouTube. My name is Ben Ferriolo. If you haven't already, please visit my website. There's a link in the description box below, right under my email address. It can show you how to find, access, and analyze seismic and GPS deformation data, how to understand the many different types of seismic plots and charts people use, and it contains hundreds upon hundreds of seismic plots and images pertaining to a great many seismic events and swarms. Now, if you haven't already, also, please go check out my most recent video. Go to my channel, click videos, and look at the video just right before for this one. It contains the seismic audio to the recent, recent excuse me, magnitude 5.3 in Hawaii, which is the second largest earthquake to hit Hawaii since the eruptive activity calmed in August of 2018. It also contains the seismic audio to the deep long period high frequency tremor like event, which occurred about six hours or so after the magnitude 5.3 and also the audio to the recent magnitude 4.0 in Utah which struck in the Black Rock Desert Volcanic Field. And according to the waveform frequency data, it is my humble opinion that that magnitude 4.0 was definitely a volcanic earthquake. I mean, I could be wrong, no professional at this, but from what I've seen from other examples from other volcanic areas, I do believe it was definitely a volcanic earthquake. Go check that out. I just want to let you guys know there is something developing in California. Nothing too, too major. Now, we did have an outbreak of seismicity, including, well, let's see, magnitude 4.0, I believe. Let's see, multiple aftershocks. I'm going to say about 30 earthquakes or so in this location here, including a 2.5, 2.9, 3.4, and then a 3.9. It was originally a 4.0, but now downgraded. Multiple 4.0s have been striking the United States lately. Very interesting, but I want to focus my attention over here. You see there's a large batch of seismicity right in this location right here. 85 earthquakes in the past 24 hours as of 3.06 p.m. Pacific time, April 15, 2019. Let me turn on largest magnitude first. We had a 4.1 at 1.2 kilometers in depth, and we're going to look at the seismic data to this in just a second. We had a 2.3 at 1.1 kilometers in depth, 2.2, 2.2, 2.2, 2.0. Multiple twos. The majority of the seismicity is pretty low, between 0 0.1 magnitude and 1.5 magnitude, but we do have some larger magnitudes. Now, seismicity is normal for this area, yes, but once in a while it does get this high, and I think I know why. This is a geothermal pumping operation, I believe the largest in the world, called the Geysers, the Geysers, California, and we'll check that out right now. All right, here we are at volcanoes.usgs.gov. Here's Clear Lake. Notice the patch of seismicity is right just due south of Clear Lake. Let's go back and read about it just real quick. This is the Clear Lake Volcanic Field, which is a volcanic basically made up of basalt to rhyolite. Most recent eruption was supposedly about 10,000 years ago. Many cities are in the range of the volcano. Threat potential is high, which is just one lower than very high. Now, the Clear Lake Volcanic Field is located about 90 miles north of San Francisco, excuse me, San Francisco, California. The town of Clear Lake lies within the volcanic field, as does much of the 43,000 acre freshwater lake of its namesake. The Geyser Steam Field, which is what I was talking about, which sits at the southwest margin of the volcano region, somewhere in this area. Notice that most of the seismicity occurs down here, basically right under the geothermal pumping operation. And now the, the geyser steam field, which sits at the southwest margin of the volcanic region, is host to one of the world's most productive geothermal power plants, producing enough electricity for 850,000 homes. The heat driving the geothermal system emanates from a zone of partially molten rock, magma, deep below the greater Clear Lake volcanic system. The most prominent volcanic feature is 300,000, supposedly 300,000 year old Mount Kanolchi, rising about 3,200 feet above the southwestern shore of the lake. Now, the most recent eruptions occurred supposedly about 11,000 years ago. Although Clear Lake Volcanic Field has not erupted for several millennia, sporadic volcanic-type earthquakes do occur. Yes, they do. And the numerous hot springs and volcanic gas seeps at in the area point to its potential to erupt again. Monitoring at Clear Lake region is by the USGS and a collaborative effort, effort excuse me, with Calpine Corporation in the Geyser Steam Field, which provides real-time tracking of earthquake activity. In addition, the USGS periodically analyzes volcanic gas and hot springs throughout the region. This is an active volcano, guys. It is not erupting right now, but it will again someday. Again, the majority of the seismicity is located right here. The Geyser Steam Field is in this area. 
and they draw a lot of energy from the magma chamber down there, and the recent earthquakes are somewhat shallow, possibly right above the magma chamber or at it. I don't know the exact depth of the magma chamber. You can always go to volcanoes.usgs.gov, select the Clear Lake Volcanic Field, go to publications. They probably do have publications about the magma chamber, but for the sake of time, I'm not going to look at that right now. I want to look at some seismic and GPS deformation data. First, we're going to look at GPS deformation data for this area and see if there's any uplift or subsidence going on. Again, there were 84 earthquakes in the past 24 hours, including a 4.1, 2.3, multiple 2.2s, and a couple other 2.0s, majority of the seismicity being around 1.5 down to 0.1 magnitude. All right, so here we are at the GPS instrument map. I'm going to zoom in. Notice there are a lot in California, so we should get a good station right where the epicenter of this earthquake swarm is occurring. I want to see if there's any uplift going on at all. Let's see if I can zoom in and find the Clear Lake region, which is, yes, we do. We have a instrument right here. Notice Clear Lake region. Earthquake swarm is occurring right about this location, so it seems this station right here, P203 is the closest station. Okay, so now here we are at the data download site for GPS deformation data from UNAVCO. Remember, you can understand how to do all of this if you go to my website, go to the How To drop down menu, and click the page about GPS deformation charts. Now, let's see, what was it again? P203. So let's enter P203. CWUNAM08 is what we should use from February 1st through April 15th, 2019. So we'll see a good amount of data to see how deformation has been acting the past few months. Remember to always press try it out, go down, highlight the link, the request URL, open link in new tab, and it is downloaded. Let's take a look at the GPS deformation data. As you can see here, here we have the GPS deformation data for P203, as you can see right there. Now, remember in my GPS deformation video, again, a few videos back I did tell you guys about the mistake in the GPS deformation video. I told you guys to use STD dev for the GPS deformation data. I was wrong. If you use STD dev, that will not show any growing or shrinking trends, which is what we need to see if uplift or subsidence is occurring over an extended period of time. So use delta. Remember, N is north-south horizontal deformation. E is east-west horizontal deformation. And U is up, vertical. Otherwise, in other words, uplift or subsidence. So we got to select this column right here, go all the way down, select the entire data, press insert on Microsoft Excel, and let's insert a chart right here. Okay. Interesting. Okay, here, let me try to, I don't know why Microsoft Excel is acting so slow. It never acts slow. Okay, so we do see since February 1st, now remember, this is the data from P203, the closest GPS deformation station, which is basically right on top of the earthquake epicenter. I'm going to turn on a trend line. Now, a trend line is showing active subsidence. Notice we do see subsidence is occurring, but halfway through, I'm going to say maybe in the middle of March, maybe mid to late March of this year, 2019, up uh, subsidence stopped, as you can see here. It Seems like it's still ongoing, but look right here from this point all the way over here. There's no more subsidence. It's basically, it looks like it is transferring from subsidence to uplift. So that could be why we are seeing a large increase in seismicity as of late. Again, I'm no geodist, but it does look like subsidence is stopping here, which could mean that another round of uplift could be approaching for this area for the Clear Lake volcanic field. Again, I don't know that 100% for sure, but remember, these are in meters, so the change is not major, guys. It's nothing too major. Over here, we see meters. One, two, three. Move the decimal point over three times. Move it to the right three times to get millimeters. Each horizontal section of this chart from one line to another line is five millimeters. So again, the overall change is very small but it does seem subsidence has stopped as subsidence was ongoing for looks like for quite a while. So we just saw the GPS deformation data for the Clear Lake volcanic field. Now let's go back, shall we? Let's see, are there any more reported earthquakes right now? No, there are not. We're going to go to the 4.1 right down here. We're going to check out the event page. Again, they say this magnitude 4.1 occurred at about 1.2 kilometers in depth. And that's 72 people reported feeling this earthquake. Very intriguing, guys. Very intriguing. Of course, no economic or fatalities. No economic losses, I mean. 
uh, none of those because it wasn't large enough. But again, it was a pretty noteworthy earthquake, and they have seen 4.0s here before, but again, we just saw the GPS deformation data, and it does look like it is changing. Let's click Origin to see... Let's click phases to see what the closest seismic station is. Click arrival time. Is it going to work? Okay. BGSQK DPZ. I'm not going to use DPZ because I'm not familiar with that type of channel. I'm going to use the second closest station, which the arrival time seems pretty similar, so they're probably within the same location. GDXB in the NC network, broadband vertical. If you go to the Iris Data Select URL builder and try to download from this area, you will not find it because it is in the NC network. And you notice I already have it filled out, NC GDXB. That was the right one, right? Yeah, GDXB. Broadband vertical, no location code. I have the time period for the 15th set. I already downloaded the data and I have it opened here in the seismic program swarm. So let's take a look at some of these earthquakes. Again, 84 in the past 24 hours with many of them being around 1.5 to 2.0, even a 4.1. Very interesting. Let's check it out. Okay, so before I start, I want to let you guys know I have persistent rescale off. I have overlap set to 95, and I also have a 0.8 hertz high pass filter added because this is a broadband station. And also notice for the spectrogram, it is set to a max frequency of 50 hertz instead of the normal 25, because many of these earthquakes have some pretty high range frequencies associated to them. So we're going to take a look, right? So in the early in the day, we did see a few earthquakes, right? We got one there. High range frequencies, again, going up to 50 hertz, guys. That is the top. 50 hertz, here's 20 hertz, here's 10 hertz. 5 hertz is probably right about here. And again, I'm not really seeing any uh, low frequency background tremor, but that's not really required at a volcano really until it gets super active. So again, this could be volcanic in nature related to the geothermal pump, uh, pumping process, excuse me, because, uh, you know, geothermal pumping is helpful. It does produce a lot of electricity, but it's dangerous, guys. I, it could cause an eruption. You never know. They could be doing it correctly. They could be not doing it correctly. They could be cutting corners. I don't know. But then again, it's a volcano, and drawing energy from any volcano is dangerous no matter what you do. So again, we have the seismic data here to the second closest seismic station to this earthquake swarm we are seeing today at the Clear Lake Volcanic Field. A lot of volcanic fields have been seeing swarms lately, guys. Now, the magnitudes of some of these quakes are not major. This one going up to about 20,000 amplitude count. Remember, amplitudes are much lar are shown much larger on broadband stations because they are much more sensitive. All right, I'm going to go back to the spectrogram. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Let's go forward. A little earthquake, little earthquake. None much, little earthquake. Keep going forward. Keep going forward. Keep going forward. Come on, buddy. So we didn't see really much seismicity. There were a few quakes here and there. It's normal, but then... Boom! This is when a lot of these seismicity started, was with the magnitude 4.1. And look at how many aftershocks. Do you see all those? And again, having some pretty high range frequencies. Very interesting. Um, but I am going to set this to 30 hertz, because I do kind of want to spread it out a little bit. So here we have it set to 30 hertz. This is the magnitude 4.1, which they say occurred at 1.2 kilometers in depth. Pretty shallow, guys. Pretty shallow. Remember, zero kilometers in depth is sea level. Many aftershocks. Many, 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 many aftershocks. Probably many of the aftershocks were not reported. And then we had continued seismicity throughout the day. The earthquakes are strange. Ex the magnitude 4.1, look at this. Look at how strange that looks. Do you see that? Uh, and this even has a frequency filter on. Very weird. I... Personally, I've never seen an earthquake look like this. I can't even begin to imagine what caused this because I just, <laughs> I don't know. I just throw my hands up in the air because it's just an odd looking earthquake. The main burst of the earthquake lasted, let's see, 11.5403, 11.5407. Only lasted a few seconds, guys. Very quick earthquake, but again, we did have strong, strong amplitudes going well beyond that. Let's keep going forward again. Keep going forward. And it's glitching. Come on. There we go. So again, these earthquakes, there are many of them, many, many occurring a lot of times in rapid succession, which is sometimes what we see during the earthquake swarms at Yellowstone. Now, I'm not saying for sure this is magma, but this could be, remember, fracking and geothermal pumping operations. If there's magma nearby, it can aggravate the magma chamber. It probably could cause some type of intrusion event, because if you're providing a weakness, because drilling down there obviously is going to provide a weakness that wasn't there beforehand, right? 
Well, if you provide a weakness, Magma is very independent and likes to go where it pleases, guys. So let's keep going forward. Let's just look at some of these real quick. Here's another one right here. Check this out. Very high range frequencies. Very, very, very high range, guys. Let's see. Here's another one right here. Slightly larger, it looks like. Again, very high range frequencies. Multiple, multiple earthquakes throughout the day. This one had a downwards dipping P wave. Notice that? The first P wave, the, the first wiggle of any earthquake on a seismogram is called a P wave. But look at some of the other earthquakes in the area. Oh, that one had a downward dip too. But let's look at this earthquake as well. Notice how it's not a downward dip, but it goes up. That, I, I'm still learning about this, guys. I still do not exactly know what that means, but I know it's important somehow. Please bear with me because I'm still actively learning seismology and there are still a lot of things I have a hard time understanding, guys. But we're all here to learn, right? We're all here to learn. Let's check this one out. Uh, downward dipping P wave. Very interesting. Here's a little teeny teeny tiny guy right here. Upwards going P wave. Downward going P wave. So we see multiple different processes possibly as part of the swarm, but the majority of the seismicity started after the magnitude 4.1. Let's zoom out. Let's just go through these one more time, shall we? Very interesting. Little bit of seismicity in the past few hours, but it seems like it has calmed. The burst of seismicity again was probably caused by the 4.1. So what do you think occurred at Clear Lake Volcanic Field? A lot of volcanic fields lately have been seeing earthquakes, guys. Very, very intriguing. And we did look at the GPS deformation data. Let's take one last look at that just real quick. As we see from P203, which is the closest GPS deformation data to the earthquake swarm in Clear Lake Volcanic Field. Actually, it's right above the epicenter of the swarm, basically. We do see, remember, 5 millimeters per section or per horizontal section, as I meant. Again, we uh, since February 1st, we have seen an ongoing subsidence, but about halfway through, possibly around mid to late March of 2019, this year, we did see subsidence pretty much has stopped, and it is possible we could be seeing another round of uplift could be starting. But then again, the amount of uplift, if it is starting, would be small for right now. Don't know where this is gonna lead, so we will keep a very close eye on Clear Lake Volcanic Field. Let's go all the way back to the earthquake site just to see if anything, because <laughs> this happens a lot. Sometimes I'll be recording uh, a video about a certain earthquake, right? And right when I'm done recording the video, something else happens. It always happens. Not really seeing much else. Let's zoom out. Let's go to world. Not seeing much else. Let's zoom into Hawaii. We have a few more aftershocks near the Hualalai volcano. Again, please go check out my most recent video, which includes the seismic audio to the recent deep long period high frequency event, the magnitude 5.3 near Hualalai volcano, and the magnitude 4.0 in Utah in the Black Rock Desert Volcanic Field, which in my opinion was definitely a volcanic earthquake. So I will be back soon. Let me know what you think. See you later, guys.